Yeah, let me talk to Barry Bonds, please. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Barry? Barry, this is the uh, BBWAA, John Herbert speaking, from the uh, Baseball Writers Association of America. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know, you've, uh, you've won the MVP award again. Ah, <laughs> cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah, you were named on every single ballot. In fact, on some of the ballots, you were named twice, three times, even. Oh, cool. <laughs> so if, uh, yeah, if you just send that, uh, that check to me, a uh, million dollars, just like the other couple of times, we'll send the trophy right out to you overnight mail, okay? Cool. <laughs> okay, thanks, Barry, congratulations. They fall for it every year. can't start the show without a camera. We'll get to Barry Bonds, MVP, and all that rigmarole in a moment. But uh, first, know your cable operator has not screwed up. This is ESPN 2's Sports Night on ESPN, a special sort of brief taste of what we do here on the weekends, we being Susie Culber and, and me, Keith Olbermann. Sports Night, the real deal, is like a TV mini-series, three nights in a row for three hours. What Sports Center is to ESPN, Sports Night is to ESPN 2. But we do things differently over on the Deuce. We take a more progressive look at sports, and not just the pro ranks, but the sports you and I may get into on our off days. Sports night, 7.30 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And as we take you along on this brief one-hour romp through what we do for nine hours each weekend, probably at least once you've thought of Charles Barkley as a cartoon character, well... Coming up, Charles Barkley, comic book hero. We'll watch as a crazed illustrator turns the pride of the Phoenix Suns into a detective who tries to solve the case of the referee murders. Maybe Charles should look into the mirror. That's later. How much would you pay to take on the enemy in real-life fighter plane combat? Maybe you'd pay not to have to do it at all. Anyway, the Sports Night crew will try anything. Lon McCarron was juiced to take flight against former 49er DB Dwight Hicks. Warning, this is not a simulation. Fasten your seat belt, belts, grab the barf bag, the story later on Sports Night. And later, we'll take a deep, probing look at the song sweeping the sports nation. Even Harry Callis says it. Even Charlie Steiner says it. First, it was We Will Rock You, then the instrumentals from Rock and Roll Part 2. Now, the new musical craze, catchphrase, and or annoyance is... Whoop that is! Whoop that is! Whoop that is! Whoop that is! Hit me! Whoop, Barry Bonds is MVP, but even with the accolades, it doesn't seem like the media or the fans really embrace Barry B. What does this superstar endorse, anyway? The door should be wide open, after all. Joe Montana is in KC, Chris Webber has been on the IR. Why isn't Barry Bonds the toast of the town? Maybe it's that World Series thing. Well, it's just that, it's just that one big hump that I have to get through, I think. It's just that one big big hump of the one big shadow in my life right now that I'm going to have to really try to, to accomplish. Um, I, you know, like they always sit there and say, you know, I'm always in the race, I'm just tired of losing it. <laughs> and even though Bonds won the MVP, Joe Montana is still the main man. A local TV station in the Bay Area is doing a three-part interview with Joe Montana. Down, it can well be argued that among Giants fans, Will Clark, Robbie Thompson, and Matt Williams have all been more popular than Bonds. On the other hand, it's just his first year there. It's a little unfair to compare him to the other guys. However, in terms of comparing him for National League MVP, a large number of NL players have argued since midseason that the man who was the most valuable to his team this year was the runner-up, Len Dykstra of the Phillies. Not only did he change his game this year, abandoning the head-first-to-the-wall stuff that got him injured every other year, but over the course of the season in which he hit 19 homers, stole 37 bases, scored 143 runs, and drove in 66 more as a leadoff guy, he never had a slump. All right, he, he spits a lot. Barry Bonds is more elegant. But consider these unpublicized numbers. Only twice all year did he go longer than two games without a hit. Only twice. And besides that exciting performance, only twice all year did Dykstra go more than three games without having scored a run. Only twice. He went the whole year without a slump with clutch hit after clutch hit. And the Phillies won something, which the Giants uh, didn't. 
And remember also that Bonds had Will Clark and Matt Williams batting around him. Dykstra hit ahead of Mariano Duncan and behind a bunch of pitchers. Right, and it may not have an effect on the writers, but the Phillies are that blue-collar team, and the fans can really appreciate that. They can relate more to a Dykstra blue-collar guy than a Bonds who's more of a hot dog and just makes it look so easy all the time, and not to hold it against him, but Dykstra just seems to work harder. Yeah, well, at least it looks that way. Not that necessarily it's true, but I mean, we've got another blue-collar guy out there, too, in another sport, and he's in trouble. Yeah, he is. Trouble should be John Daly's middle name. Sunday, the long hitter was suspended from the PGA Tour for the second time this year, this coming two days after he failed to finish a hole during the second round of the Kapalua International. Daly will still be playing golf this weekend south of the border. He'll be the main attraction at the Mexico Open, which is not part of the PGA Tour. After an exhibition this afternoon, Daly spoke to the press. He stressed he is not drinking again, but the stress of staying sober and the tensions of poor golf led to his burst of temper. He's been sober for 11 months, but his personal life is crumbling. He and his wife are divorcing. He added he respects PGA.